Hello there and welcome back to the second episode of the small gone part of the journey um, where as you can see um, everyone else has already played their final game. We're playing this on Monday uh, because uh, we had a waterlogged pitch so that's, that's fun but what it does mean is going into this match we know we've already secured our objective of a top half finish. So you know I'm pleased about that. You know, I don't speak Russian yet, so I've not got the ability really to talk to the players. So just getting them to understand the tactic is good. Um, I'll take you through the previous games uh, since the last one. So obviously last time we lost 2-0 against Luchminsk and played terrible. Then we played against Torpedo Minsk, lost 1-0, played terrible. Lost in the last minute though, which really sucked because we didn't deserve to lose. Neither team played well. You know, I think they had one shot from like... 40 yards out and it went in the back of the net just not great at all uh, and then we played uh, Kimik Svetlogotsk I think that's probably how you say that I'm not certain uh, we drew 0-0 still didn't play well you know none of the strikers were working so I went to the schedule and I looked through and I was like so who was scoring their goals and I saw this guy here Alexander Semenov I didn't know he was even at the club yeah, he must have been like he was like in, sitting in the under twenty three for some reason when I came here, despite being the top goal scorer this season. Thirty four year old Russian, you know, don't know how we've got a Russian in the team when it says that we can't have uh, people who aren't from Belarus. But yeah, I changed it for the next game against top of the league Gomel, and we won two one. So Semenov won a penalty. And Chudnovsky put it away in the 59th minute. And then 10 minutes later, himself went through on goal, 1-1, one on one, and made it 2-0. We then did give away a penalty ourselves. Uh, Stanislav Gnedko gave it away. And Zavan Badayan scored for Gamel. Uh, but we managed to hold out against top of the league and picked up our first win. And then against local rivals Oshmayani, uh, Alexander Semenov again picked up the goal, going through 1-1. One on one, uh, after Kovalchuk missed a penalty in like the 20th minute, which was terrible. But now we go up against Orsha, knowing we can't go any lower, but we can finish uh, as high as 6th. So we've got that to look forward to. So hopefully we can do that, win this game, finish in 6th. Um, this is the type we've been playing. We picked up quite a few injuries recently uh, in the last couple of games. So considering it's the final game of the season, we know where we're finishing Nothing really matters. I'm bringing a lot of the young players in. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got uh, this Oleg Lovnyedko uh, at left back. Uh, Maxim Kovalchuk uh, here, central midfield. Uh, Sergei Maschenko uh, in attacking midfield. He's made three sub appearances. And these guys are growing really well. And he's actually attracting interest, Petrov, from uh, two teams in the highest tier of Belarusian football. So, you know, I don't really want to sell him, but if he wants to go, we should hopefully be able to get, uh, you would hope, decent money for him. Because uh, he's got, you know, really high potential, you know, four and a half star potential. 16, worth 1.4k. Hopefully we could get 100k for him, maybe more. Um, I've actually transfer listed a lot of players on here because we're over the wage budget and I kind of want to be able to build this team uh, the way I want. Although I have brought in a player, this Roman Grabowski, uh, 21 years old, 3 star ability, uh, 4 and a half star potential, um, was just sitting as a free agent, you know, I thought I'll bring him in, he's only on £200, pounds. Um, you know, 11 finishing, 14 first touch, 12 acceleration, 14 agility, he should just be decent as a poacher, you know, and like I said, he's young, and it should be fine, uh, we can't register him unfortunately, I don't think, yeah. You can't register him until next season, so he can't actually make his debut yet. Um, but hopefully next season he can lead the line, because Semenov is really old, 34. Uh, so I will see you at the match. All right, and here we go. We're at the Yonos Stadium in Shmogon, or Shmohon, I'm not sure. Uh, it's spelled differently actually in Belarusian. It's spelled Shmohon, but in English it's Smogon. If there are any Belarusians watching this, or even Russians who, because you know, the former Soviet states, who the language is probably very similar. Um, 
please, I would love to know how to say that properly so I don't keep butchering uh, the language. Um, but no point dilly-dallying. Let's get into the match. And they're playing... Okay, so they're going to try and dominate in the midfield. Hopefully, uh, my, the wingers and our attacking midfielder can sit in this space here and kind of feed the ball through to Semenov. But hopefully, this guy will be sort of stopped by our defence. That's the hope. Basic tactical awareness. I need to be better you take it. Yeah, so this is on a lovely, lovely stadium. Red seats, very small. It's about 3,000 seater. I don't know if it's all seater. I didn't look. Um, you know, I'll be quite happy with a very quiet game. Oh, another thing I did, I changed it to attacking and took off whiteboard into the box. Forgot to tell you that. But yeah, so yeah, no longer are we working on the box because we were not creating chances at all by doing that. Like, my guess would be teams were just sitting defensively because we're meant to be the third best team in the league. So teams just sat back and defended, meaning that we were just not creating chances. Uh, so hopefully now that we can you know, play a bit more free in the attacking third, uh, we can do better. Nothing really happening 20 minutes. They've had, Okay, they're kind of dominating us. Um, but they are all long shots. You know, five shots, four long shots. Um, but this is exactly what happened against um, Torpedo Minsk. They dominated us, but they're all from range, so I wasn't too worried, you know. They're still trying to learn the tactic, and it kind of... No, I'm not going to do that because we're not closing down. We do not close down because it pulls people out of position. We're having some more shots, but they're still dominating. I'll have a go at them at half time. But I mean, we're playing a super young team. If we got a draw, I would be more than happy. You know, I'm not too worried about finishing slightly higher. It's like an extra thousand uh, pounds. Uh, so he's looking nervous, Chudinovsky. So let's bring on. Sergei Ravina. Yes, if we get a goal, we can win. That's how football works. I'm glad my assistant is smart enough to know how that works. Oh, we've actually got 669 people. That's the highest attendance since I've been here. So that, that's good. We had, like, top of the league here. We had, like, less than 400 people. One thing I have noticed is that the away culture here is non-existent. It's always, like, 10 away fans at these games. Uh, well, you know, you think it would be better. But it's really not. Um, do we have any? We have no defenders on the bench because they're all on the pitch because the ones that aren't are injured. Um, Kolchuk's not playing well. Let's bring on Ushakov. And we're going to bring on Costco for S but Petra. Petra's not playing well. So let's put Costco on in his natural position instead of uh, up front. Maybe he can play better. Because I'm not transfer-listing him, because I feel he's got a decent potential. So, you know, if he can reach that, you know, he should be good enough for the league above. Our goalkeeper is apparently the quality of a goalkeeper from the Belarusian High League, the top tier of Belarus. So, and, and you can see that in the way that we play. Defensively, we're very solid. You know, I think we have the third uh, most, or third least goals conceded in the league. Um, God... I don't like it when the first half of the game comes in the 73rd minute and it's for them. Oh my god, they hit the crossbar. Right, this is the last game of the season. Just don't lose and I'll be ecstatic. You know, because then it'll give me the summer, rebuild the squad, learn some Russian. Um, I'm redoing a lot of the stuff. Like they've not got a fitness coach, not got a goalkeeping coach. That's all going to be changed. Uh, but I'll go into depth after the match because I'll do like, a quick review of, I suppose, this half a season at UCD and Smorgon. So far, six minutes to go. Nothing really happening. I mean, I'm not surprised. It's happening like two days after the rest of the game's been played. You know, but I don't drive all the way from Lithuania to watch rubbish. You know, I expect better. You know, I'll be sitting in my lovely apartment in Lithuania and I will be ringing up a bunch of. Uh, I suppose Belarusian people to join our team, join our coaching staff, because uh, it's going to be a complete overhaul of uh, not the whole squad but the backroom staff definitely. Um, I don't think so. I'll say we're unlucky. Uh, you were unlucky tonight. There you go. 
There you go, 40 points after 26 games. We know that if we can improve slightly, turn some of those draws into wins, turn some of those losses into draws, we can we can win the league. I, th I think that's possible. Um, I'm good. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. That's the guy playing on the right, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, good. I'm, I'm ho hopefully the two wingers can grow because they're sort of uh, the hope for the future, I feel. They're both really high uh, potential, four and a half star. Uh, so hopefully they can really uh, grow a lot. Um, but I suppose, you know, the one thing really that needs to be done is rebuilding the squad. So at the moment, uh, where's staff? Um, you know, all my backroom staff uh, in terms of coaching, all their contracts run out uh, at the end of the year. So hopefully, so they're all going to go. My head, my head scout uh, is not great, but he's going to be stuck here. I did sign this guy, uh, Dimitri Popov, as a director of football. Because uh, he's, he's pretty decent. Um, you know, I just want him to deal with... I'll have him deal with things I don't want to. Dealing with, like, staff contracts and things. Um, but that's only really renewals. Like, I want to pick the staff. that He's just going to renew people's contracts if I want them. Uh, and the head physio, his contract runs out. He's not great. So I'm going to let him go. But this guy, he's got nine. He's not terrible. So I'll let him stay on. Um... But I mean, other than that, not really much to do. Um, so yeah, we finished seventh. Um, didn't play many games. I think we what did we do? We drew two. Yeah, we drew two, lost two, and won two. Which isn't terrible. Hopefully, we can turn, you know, like I said, some of those draws into wins, some of those wins, uh, some of those losses into draws, and we can push on. Because as you can see, this second half of the season is what ruined them. If they'd have picked up. 10 points anywhere over this point here, yeah? You know, baby, that was a win. That, you know, that was a draw. That was a draw. These two were wins. Suddenly, you're top of the league. So hopefully that's what we can do uh, next season. I obviously didn't take part in the Belarusian Cup. Uh, but if we go to my job history, so... Uh, UCD end up winning their final game against uh, Cabantilli. Uh, James Fogarty is now their uh, manager. Uh, a lot of the players I signed are still there. You know, they f ended up finishing seventh. Um, but as you can see, they only finished a point behind Waterford in the end. Um, so I think UCD, when I came in, they were on 16 points. So I, I, I feel like what we did there should hopefully help them, at least for the next season. So, you know, we came in here, and as you can see... Oh, this nice run in the middle, you know, and I left just after the uh, Waterford game. So I would say the time at UC Dublin was well spent, uh, but I'm looking now looking forward to working at Smorgon in Belarus and hopefully rebuilding the squad. So hopefully next time we come, it will be the start of next season. Um, I can't guarantee an episode uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Um, so if, if you're looking forward to that episode, it will most likely be out on um, Thursday. But you never know, depending on how fast the game wants to sim, because I have got pretty much every league in Europe loaded, as well as the MLS. Um, then, yeah, it might be out tomorrow, but I can't guarantee it. So I'll most likely see you on Thursday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.